You're looking at the top edge of a leaf. I remove this leaf along with five gallons of water from a small artificial pond that I have set up in my front yard. I place the leaf and the water in a five gallon tank and this is what I saw. This irresistibly cute little creature is known as a seed shrimp, or by its more fancy name, ostracod, and it's about a millimeter in length. The other creatures seen here with the distinctive whirling pattern of swimming are tiny filter feeders called dinoflagellates, and they're neither an animal nor a plant, but have characteristics of both. Sea shrimp, on the other hand, are crustaceans, and they're essentially like a tiny shrimp hidden inside the two halves of a clam shell. And just like a clam, the seed shrimp can close both halves of its shell and seal itself in. This allows them to survive without water for long periods of time. And amazingly enough, in one study, scientists found that 26% of the seed shrimp eaten by bluegill sunfish were able to pass through the shrimp's digestive system unharmed and come out the other end none the worse for wear. Yes, seed shrimp are incredibly durable little animals, and this is why they can be found in almost every aquatic habitat on the planet, from the very small to the very large. From the dark waters of subterranean caves to the tiny pools of water that collect in bromeliads high up in the trees of tropical rainforests. Seed shrimp are in the oceans, they're in the rivers, they're in the trees. Seed shrimp are everywhere. And it's not at all uncommon to find them in the home aquarium. However, there'll be more of them and they'll be more noticeable in tanks that don't contain fish, such as shrimp tanks. And many fish keepers, not knowing what they are, panic at the sight of them and rush to the internet looking for a cure, most likely in the form of some sort of poison. But there's no need because seed shrimp are completely harmless and they're a great little cleanup crew to have in your aquarium. Their eggs can completely dry out and survive for years without water, just like brine shrimp eggs. And their eggs are so small that they can be transported by the wind or on the feet of migrating waterfowl. The eggs and the adults can even live in old aquarium gravel and sand, or they can come home with you in a bag of fish or on some aquatic plants. However they arrive, they do no harm, and I highly recommend buying a quality magnifying glass that you can use to get a better idea of what tiny organisms you have living in your aquarium. At the moment, you're looking at the base of the leaf, but just a bit further down on the stem, there's an even smaller and even more primitive aquatic creature that's equally as fascinating. Let's have a look. Here we find a colony of Vorticella, these minute filter feeders sometimes set up shop on the body of a freshwater shrimp. A Vorticella consists of a head that's shaped like a tulip, the edge of which is surrounded by tiny hairs known as cilia. The cilia wave and create a current that then sweeps food into the Vorticella's mouth. The head of the Vorticella is supported by a very thin stalk that attaches it to a surface such as a rock, a leaf, or the head of your favorite shrimp. One or two of them don't cause any harm, but a whole lot of them can create a problem for an infected shrimp. The sea shrimp are also sharing their leaf with a green hydra. This relative of the jellyfish gets its green coloration from the algae that lives inside its body. Both the hydra and the algae benefit from this arrangement in what's known as a symbiotic relationship. The algae is provided with a safe place to live and food byproducts from the hydra, while the hydra benefits by getting energy from the algae's ability to use the sun for photosynthesis. Here, Adaphnia struggles for its life after it's ensnared in the Hydra's deadly tentacles. The Hydra's tentacles are covered in stinging cells known as pneumatocysts. Each of these cells contains a tiny dart filled with a potent neurotoxin designed to paralyze its victim. The darts fire when they make contact with the prey. 
And luckily for this little Daphnia, only one of the Hydra's tentacles have touched it, and so the little Daphnia swims away to live another day. The Hydra has no brain and no eyes, so it hunts by sense of touch, and all it has to do is wait patiently for its dinner to arrive. However, this particular Hydra seems to have trouble holding on to its catch. But he's in no hurry because Hydras do not appear to age or die from old age. In fact, every cell in their body is completely renewed approximately every 45 days. And so, as far as we can tell, Hydras are immortal. In fact, hydras are so resilient that scientists are able to blend them up into a little hydra smoothie of sorts and then watch in amazement as blended bits and pieces reassemble themselves into a complete hydra once again. And please note that the preceding statement was a very simplified explanation of the process of disassociation and reassociation of the hydra's individual cells, but that's the basic gist of what these amazing animals can do. And to put it even more simply, if you take them apart, they can put themselves back together again. And that's the stuff that horror movies are made of, because what you end up with is a monster that you can't kill. Of course, hydras are not monsters. They are, in fact, beautiful little creatures who are perfectly designed for surviving in a dangerous and often unforgiving world. I don't really have trouble with hydras in my tank, but I'd be willing to bet that most planted tanks contain a small population of these amazing little animals, and the only time I see their numbers really expand is when I'm feeding lots of baby brine shrimp and microworms to a group of young fry. And yes, hydra will eat very small fish if they can catch them, but as you can see, not every attempt at securing a meal is successful. And now we're back to our little friend, the seed shrimp, who is about to go to the bathroom. Seed shrimp have a very simple digestive system. And due to their small size, they have no need for a respiratory system or gills because they're able to take in oxygen and remove carbon dioxide directly through their skin. Yes, there's a very different set of rules when you're this small, and Mother Nature has provided us with an endless array of fascinating little aquatic creatures, each with their own unique design and strategy for survival. And the smaller we go, the less we know. The oldest seed shrimp fossils date back to nearly 500 million years ago. And to put that in perspective, that's about when plants first began to colonize the land. In fact, there were seed shrimp swimming around long before land animals even appeared. And they've survived all five of the Earth's major extinction events. Unfortunately, these rugged little seed shrimp are no match for an overzealous fish keeper armed with a bottle of poison and a fear of the strange little creatures that can suddenly appear in a fish tank. <laughs> 